So yeah, the last thing that happened was Orphan reached up and pulled this very succulent looking red apple off this tree. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and mark the colors of the trees down, just because you guys can look around now that you know the apples Orphan, are different are you colors. already eating it? We've got it, red. It really, it really depends on like how, how bad is the look the tree is giving me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Orphan taking she's, a bite. She's got it like halfway to her mouth and her mouth is open. And she's well, just kind of staring at the this tree. Way. You've already <laughs> taken the fruit. You can't give it back. This is true. So we've got Elda. Is is Elda saying this? No, I, this is this this is your conscious version, conscious version of Elda. <laughs> I, I just I keep picturing Orphan just very slowly while staring a hole into the tree, bringing the apple to her mouth, taking a bite, and just chewing deliberately. <laughs> so I drew letters on the trees. We've got. Uh -huh. The tree Orphan is standing on, under, and the one across the lake, these are trees with big red apples. The two next to you here have green apples. This one over here has uh, yellow or golden apples hanging from it. The tr uh, living trees across the river here has all three types of apples and has a blue ribbon taped around one of its branches. These smaller things here are bushes. Okay. What are, what are the rocks? Uh, the rocks are rocks made out of cookies. Okay. Oh... That's so really good. Good. Gonna, she bites into the apple. Bite into the apple. And wow. again, the tree looking at you squirrels up his face again in disapproval and harumphs at you. Does it taste like sawdust? It does. It tastes oh, terrible I... in your mouth. Well, everything does after wait, that wait. jam. Does it <laughs> does it actually? I mean, or... it, it tastes it pales in comparison to the magic jam. <laughs> well, I mean, no, no, it all... no, we've <laughs> We've all had, like, just because you're not eating your favorite food that you've ever had doesn't mean everything else is bad. It it's does after you eat the magic good. jam. I mean, it's not, you could you could chew it and swallow without making yourself sick, but it only tastes, that USB port doesn't work, Peanut. Use your laptop. It was turned off and I didn't want to turn it on. We'll turn it on and use your laptop. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have, like, six USB ports on my computer. They're all broken. Um, That's a bummer. So yeah, it tastes very faintly of apple, but you're not the person to ask whether or not it's a delicious tasting <laughs> apple. You can't make that consideration anymore. Khalil was going to say hello to the to the living tree. Did it yeah. respond? Khalil says hello to the living tree. Uh, and it turns... It doesn't turn because it's facing orphans standing under the tree with the red apples. But you see it looks over in your direction. It rustles his leaves a little bit. But then turns back to orphan. It looks at his very dour look on his face. Very disapproving. <laughs> uh, Zook had wandered over to this river and he was going to lean over and smell it to see if it smells like milk because it, I imagine it probably does smells like heavy cream, it does indeed smells like heavy cream god I want to dunk a rock in this river you <laughs> should eat a rock in that river <laughs> uh, I'm you deserve it I'm going to take a bit of this cookie floor and I'm going to throw it into the hurricane to see how they interact and the wind grabs it and whips it off you see it yeah. disintegrate when it hits the winds and it just gets flung off into the far distance and there's two more of these, like, portal-looking things over here. Yeah, you see two spiraling vortices in the winds. Uh, not like holes in the wind, but you see the wind pulls together in, like, a central place, like a black hole. And it looks like where we came out, so... Yeah, it looks identical. All three look Probably the same. Probably safe to go through those? Question mark? <laughs> Boys well, freezing? I mean, not like we have any other choice. Well, Pretty we can go much. back out the way we came. Which is the exact same as the others? Um, okay, All right. Are there any um, living creatures in here besides the tree? That I that see. Can, not from where you're standing. You can't see anything else. Um, make, we'll make a perception check. Okay. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to make one as well. Okay. I'm hoping for like some adorable like candy squirrel I can talk to. <laughs> Slash <laughs> eat. Slash eat. No, I'm done with that. Um, that's a lot of perception. That's, uh, 1918, 23. How'd you do, Khalil? Uh, 24. You don't see any creatures? You see rustling I'm, back I'm amongst sorry. these bushes. I miss, I, I, I mathed wrong. That's a 20, that's a 29. Okay, uh, but yeah, you don't see any creatures, but you, uh, Zook and Khalil, kind of walking up and down the stream, checking everything out. You guys do see some light rustling from this bush back in the corner. Okay, Zook's gonna wander over that way. Is yeah. there anything in the bushes that are edible? Uh, no. Edible? The bushes themselves just look like regular bushes. 
with broad leaves on them. Uh, no berries or anything growing on them. But yeah, fingering the twigs in your hand, they feel like little twigs. The bushes look like leaves, but they're growing up out. What, what they're growing up out of looks like dirt. Duke's gonna kind of say over his shoulder. Uh, can when do you think try to when do you guys try to talk to that tree that because it, since it doesn't want to talk common, maybe speak into its mind. Uh, all of Orphan isn't going to. I guess I can. <laughs> Soup takes his magical cohorts very for granted at this point. <laughs> No, that's fair. You called us one of us, one of you things. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I mean, I think if you detect magic, it's our old radiant enchantment. So, that's fair. So, Terran steps in front of the tree. And as you move, you step um, across the river of cream. It turns its eyes to gaze at you. Uh, hello there. And I'll say into its mind, hello there. If it has a mind. It does. And you see the recognition on its face as it processes what you've said to it. And just real quick, I actually didn't look up what languages he speaks. My, does he process it at tree speed? Like my, super slow? Those are... Uh, my apologies, but bear with me just one second. I gotta flip through a monster manual here. Monster manual? What? Monster manual. Oh, is it an int? Monster manual. He did the mash... No, we don't talk about Monster Man well. <laughs> He's not welcome here. That's racist. Not in my <laughs> table. And he responds, Beware those who trespass here. Uh. What is your purpose, mortal? And you see his eyes flick back up beyond you to Orphan, who's still munching away on the apple. <laughs> I imagine, because she's not enjoying it, she's eating it spitefully. <laughs> she, she would not eat the whole thing spitefully. She would she would just taste it, and it, when it didn't taste any, like, any good to her, she'd throw it away. Throw it into the hurricane. So she just pitches it into the hurricane, or do you throw it, like, put it, drop it on the ground at your feet? Uh, drop it off to the side. Okay, you just drop it off to the side, and it falls in the dirt next to you. So yeah, the tree has asked, what is your purpose here, mortal? We're looking for the guest rooms. <laughs> <laughs> I love that that's actually our purpose. Yeah, that's that's genuinely <laughs> yeah. true. We haven't found them yet. Yeah, we're still looking for them. <laughs> guest rooms. And so you are guests. Yeah, it surprises me too. <laughs> guests of whom? Uh, Baba Yaga. The keeper of this place. Oh, he's speaking into Terran's mind. Oh, uh, right, sorry. The witch Baba Yaga. Zook and Khalil. Yeah. When yeah. you approach the bush, what is your intention? Uh, just mm -hmm. looking you to said there's rustling, rustling around so. in there. Yeah. Well, actually, both of you have... Eh, what's Zook's... I always forget Zook's passive. It's That's only right. 17. No, it's it's really only, only 17. That's a really good <laughs> passive perception. Yeah, um, Khalil's is super mighty, though. It's plus 5 of whatever's on the character sheet. Instantly spottable when you close in, get within a ten feet of the bush or so, you see a giant hedgehog trying to hide amongst the leaves of the bush. Hey, Zook um, uh, point out, pointed out, hey, can you talk to that? Oh, Zook noticed it. Uh, yeah, so Zook, as soon as he sees the hedgehog, will, and it, it looks like it's hiding from us, or it's just, or, well, I guess it's just it's trying to It's trying to hide itself in the bush. And Zook will say, hey, how's, hey there, uh, you don't have to hide from us, we're not gonna hurt you, How, Come talk to us. Come talk to me. Are you st still standing five feet away in the bush, or like what are your what's your at what point do demeanor? I what, at what point do I see the the hedgehog? As soon Let's as you start. come around that yellow tree. <clears throat> yeah. Sorry. So so yeah, I'm still like five feet from the bush. Um, I'll I'll try to make myself look even. When you say it's a giant hedgehog, like how big is it? I mean, it's a regular sized hedgehog, but it's morbidly obese. Okay, so it's not it's not a literal giant hedgehog. It's a gotcha. like you know how DeviantArt has Sonic the Hedgehog inflation porn, right? <laughs> it's a regular wow. size hedgehog, but it's very very wow. fat. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> how many Game penises does it have? Uh, <laughs> you cannot see its genitals from where you're standing. That's fine. Okay, so but it's still uh, 
I have to I have to ask question how literal you mean things since we did just fight a giant lizard that's our size in a tiny city. Right. Scale is meaningless. But anyways, it's smaller than me, so I will actually kind of kneel down to make myself look even smaller. Okay. And I'm trying to speak to it like politely, like I do with most small creatures when I'm addressing them. So you're addressing it using your speak to small creatures. Um. Yeah. Okay. Now, it, when you get down next to it, uh, the hedgehog pulls away from you tries to pull back to the other side of the bush. When you speak to it using your speaks to small creatures, it doesn't understand you. And it retreats and skitters from this bush back along into this one. Um, uh, Zuko kind of shrug and try again and just in common. Like, hey, can you understand me this way? And say the kind of the same thing. We're not here, we're not going to harm you. Uh, we're just, we're just lost out here. When you say it in common... Uh, the hedgehog pokes its little face, its eyes and its snout, out of the front of the bush, regarding you and Khalil. But it looks very wary. So back at the uh, tree. Okay. <laughs> you say you're just your guests of Baba Yaga. Yeah, yeah. At the mention of Baba Yaga, the tree looks very angered. Looks very upset at the mention of her. He says, into your mind, he speaks, So, you are friends of the hag. No, hardly. <laughs> Honestly, I mostly said yes, because most of our guardians seem to at least not want to kill us at that point. But Then I ask again, why are you here? We're exploring the hut, uh, looking for portals between worlds. We're from a world where you can't normally cross between to others. Bear with me one second. I really want milk and cookies now. <laughs> can't remember the last time I had milk and cookies. I just had some bacon. I have some in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. I kind of want some hot bacon. chocolate. Are you from the internet? <laughs> wow. That wasn't. That wasn't <laughs> that funny. So, Tell Gahitu. Tell Gahitu that wasn't that funny. <laughs> so, he says that wasn't that funny. <laughs> that was very So I'm sorry, what was Terran's last response to the tree? Oh god, what did I say? Um, I said, no, we're not actually. I've just been saying that because it seems to make her various guardians potentially less hostile. We're <laughs> adventurers from a world where there are no gateways between worlds, and we've been exploring her uh, little menagerie here, hoping to find passage. And he scoffs at you. He says, I am hardly a guardian of the hag. What's your story, friend? Because I don't know that you are a friend. And at that, his eyes gaze back over to Orphan. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, your passive perception is like just balls, right? Eleven? Yeah, that's pretty balls. So back at the hedgehog. Yes. It's poking its little face out. And it seems to understand your, you when you speak common. Okay. And, and and I'll um ask him um can you you seem to understand me can you respond can you can you speak with us we're we're, we're not going to hurt you we're just here to we're just trying to find our way through here and it looks to you and it looks to Khalil back to you and it makes a motion like it's shaking its head so you can't so you can't respond but you can understand me and it makes a motion as though it's nodding Okay, well that's fair. Um, and I kind of look at Khalil like, what, 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 sh what do I actually want to ask this guy at this point? <laughs> well, it seems it can only answer it can only answer yes or no questions, or at least that's all it's willing to do. Okay. Um, what are uh, Eric so do and Orphan doing? Well, <laughs> these guys are conversing with the various NPCs. Orphan is going to put some distance between herself and this other tree and go see what these guys are up to. Okay, so she goes over uh, to yeah. the hedgehog. What about you, Eric? Uh, That's he's what just Elder's strolling along, too. observing this, this edible forest, making his way around, okay. probably and up the turn. The forest does look very edible. I mean, the, the rocks are made of cookies, the mud near the river is made of chocolate pudding, the river itself is made of delicious cream, and the trees have big succulent apples on them. Uh, as more and more people start approaching the bush, the hedgehog again kind of warily pulls back into the bush. 
Uh, no Zeke's, ac Zeke's actually going to kind of say, guys, let me uh, let me talk to this one one on one for a minute. It seems to be scared by your presence. Very well. All right. Orphan steps back. Uh, she doesn't really know where to go. Gonna go check out this vortex over here. I'm gonna hang out with Orphan. Okay. Uh, Khalil goes over to hang out with Eric. Eric is feverishly filling his packs with cookie rocks. <laughs> 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 is there any jam Khalil in the will uh, continue walking. <laughs> is Taryn going to relate any of what he's ha saying to the, to the rest of us at any time, or is he just... <laughs> I haven't finished talking to what I keep... Yeah. Last thing he okay. said was, so you consider me to be the hag's guardian. Right, no, no. I. Again, most of the creatures we've met here are either trapped by or enlisted by the hag. I don't really know where I am right now, in all honesty. You are in my orchard. What's the, uh, what's the storm? And he holds out his branches, so the highest one is touching just the outside of the hurricane winds, and you see the leaves and branches rustling violently. He says, that is the fence. <laughs> Does it keep things out or in? I've assumed both. How long have you been here? The tree struggles to answer the question. Uh, make a whiz ten. It might be that time uh, for many of the occupants here. Well, trees don't exactly necessarily have the best sense of time. I got a six on that. I don't know. And the best answer you get is a very long time. Okay. Have you always lived in this within this fence? No. Once I stood. In a beautiful sylvan grove. What happened? <clears throat> the hag. What was her design in building this place or fencing it in? So that's, I have no idea. The hag's designs are insane. <laughs> she has flights of fancy. As she moves from world to world, uprooting honest, God-fearing trees like myself, and who knows what else. So there are many prisons within these walls. How often do you see visitors? How many other of you conversed with? As you're conversing with him, you see his eyes, well, first of all, his eyes follow Orphan, and he loses sight of her. Uh... But he notices Zook hunched down by the bushes over here. And he asks you, what is the little one doing? Um, I actually don't know. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll look over. What do I see? You see Zook hunched down next to a bush. Um, uh, Khalil just kind of walked up next to you. Yeah. Khalil, what's Zook up to? Talking with a little rodent. Bush talking like some sort of rodent? At that, again, the tree squirrels his face up in disgust. He gives you a harumph. You should be more respectful. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry, what did I miss? Actually, Khalil, what, what language did you say that in? I'm sorry. Common? Common. Then the yeah. tree did not understand, so he doesn't no. he does not know what you just said. Yeah, but Taryn said rodent back to him. Did so. Taryn yeah. say rodent? He did. In which case, yeah, he scrolls up his face and says, you should be more respectful. <laughs> I'm sorry, did I misspeak? He says, I have few friends in this place, but I'm more fortunate than most in that I have the one. Zook. Yeah. When the other people kind of vacate, the hedgehog looks a little bit more comfortable and again, pokes his little face out of the bush. Kind of twitching its nose at you. Um, Zook will kind of ask, um, are you trapped here? Make a charisma check. Just straight up charisma. Although I believe it's pronounced charisma. Charisma, yes. Right. Charisma. 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 Uh, it's like Charisma. It's like Charmander. Be a like 16 straight charisma. And you speak 
in a friendly tone of voice, trying to uh, build confidence, build a little bit of rapport with the hedgehog. And as you do, it becomes less and less afraid of you. And it waddles out of the bush and rocks back, so it's sitting on its back haunches. And you, this thing is just bloated. This thing is <coughs> fat. And you said, what? I asked it if it was trapped here. And at that, after it rocks back on its haunches and sits down, it nods its snout. Um, and I ask it, have you been here for very long? I know that's probably relative, but... <laughs> it rocks back and forth a few times. And after a few times, it gets its weight moving so it can get down on the all four paws again. And it takes one of its claws and scratches a line in the dirt. Um, one year? And it nods. Were you brought here by the witch? By the one called Baba Yaga? And again, it, it, it kind of hesitates for a moment. Trying to think of how to answer, but then it nods. Um, I ask it, um... Does it want to leave? At that, it looks beyond you at something across the river for a moment. But then it nods again. If I follow its gaze, in what direction was it looking at? Back over the river, back towards where the other people are congregated over here. When you look back, it's scratching out something else in the dirt. And it looks like this. Looks like a, a a crude like drawing a, in the dirt. Looks is like that a, girl. a is that a girl? And it is nods. It, sh I already forgot her name. The little blonde girl we saw earlier. What Vassilia. was her name? Huh? Vassilia. Vassilia. Okay, Vassilia. Do you know Vassilia? And the hedgehog cocks its head to one side, then it shakes its head. Okay, so not Vassilia, but somebody you care about. And it shakes its head again. Hmm. I'm misinterpreting what you're saying. Um, okay. Uh, and I ask it if it knows... Um, and I kind of indicate the, the, the other two vortexes we haven't been through. And ask it, is it safe to go beyond? Or do you know what's beyond? And it does not. Back up at the tree... I'll, uh, I'll bring the other two up to speed on the conversation really quick and common. Okay. Uh, um. And I'll say, uh, so, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean any disrespect. Uh, who is your one friend? He says, Elia. And he shakes one of his branches, the one with the blue ribbon tied around it. He says, when she arrived here, she gifted me this ribbon in exchange for one of my apples. I'll look back, I'll glance over toward where Orphan is and just rub my head for a moment. <laughs> what is Orphan and Eldove doing over here? Uh, we're checking out this vortex. Are you going through it? We're tossing stuff at it at the moment. You're tossing stuff <laughs> into it? <laughs> Anything yeah, you toss. Yeah, what do you toss? <laughs> that, that apple. An apple? Jesus Christ. <laughs> where did, where did yeah, you get the apple from? It's, it's the same one that I had before. Okay, and you throw it at the vortex. Yeah. And the apple doesn't go through the vortex. Rather, what happens is it gets caught up in the wind, and you see it swirl around for a second, and then it just kind of shoots off in a random direction, battered around by the hurricane, and you lose sight of it. Well, I don't think we're going through there. <laughs> Maybe I can knock on you. <laughs> hmm. So yeah, the tree has said uh, when she arrived here, she gifted me her ribbon in exchange for an apple. Uh, this is was a human. Uh, was a girl. Yes, once. Now, what is she? And again, she glances back over where Zook is hunched down by a bush. She says, "I think your young, your small friend has met her." 
I'll, huh. I'll be right back. Eric and Khalil uh, hang out up here? Yeah. Uh, I'll follow with on. Well, I'll, I'll just move forward in telepathy range, and I'll okay. send Zuke. Um, I don't know what you're talking to over there, but apparently it was a one-point a girl. And a light bulb goes off in Zook's head, and he realizes what she had sketched out just a second ago. <laughs> I guess I'll come on over. And I okay. say, to, and I say to the hedgehog, "You used to be a little girl." And when you say that, it rocks backwards on its back and kind of rocks, kind of rolls around happily for a moment. Like, yes, finally he gets it. The gnome is not as thick as I first thought. <laughs> and then it comes. She comes back up on her back haunches. And I ask her. Um, did were you changed when you when you came to this place? And she shakes her head. Did it happen sometime after? And she nods. About this time, Eternal tap on Zeke's shoulder. Do you want me to uh, try talking to her? Actually, yeah, that's probably a pretty good idea. <laughs> I'll say to remind. Hello there. My uh, my understanding is your name is Ilya. Uh, and... I am Terran, and this is my companion Zook. And there's a. Slight moment of surprise when you speak into her mind, but you get the sense that she's been she's done this before. She's used telepathy before in various ways, and so she responds that yes, she's she is Ilya. Uh, what happened to you? The tree says you used to be a girl when you came here, and that you were its only friend. She says I worked in service of Baba Yaga, but I disobeyed her, and she was merciful. Did she send you here in addition to turning you into this, or...? Yes, this is my punishment. It could have been far worse. What did you... how did you misbehave? She says, as she looks over at the tree, to your left, this tree with the green apples, and looks back at you, and says, she is watching you now. She can see that we're conversing. And I don't want to tell you anything that could blow back on me. You understand? Yes. You think she can hear this conversation? She says it, if she's listening in, yes. Hmm. But there's no way to tell whether she's at her mirror or not. And she can see through the green tree. The green apple tree. She says there's a knot hole on each tree in the orchard. And she motions to the back of the orchard and says, except for the treant. She can see through all of them. And she has similar devices in most every room of the hut. If you've been exploring this place, she knows your movements more often than not. She should show us the guest room stuff. Yeah, no, right? <laughs> Eric, what are yes. you doing back there? Just staring at the tree. Just staring at it? It's staring Just, back. Uh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> After a few moments, it speaks to you in a language that you don't understand. I shrug at it. Mm -hmm. And what do you speak? And then it tries another language. And you don't understand that one either. <laughs> Then it tries a third language, and this one roll a religion check at disadvantage. <laughs> Double net twenties, watch. Uh, nine, nine, and you Ten. don't understand. Nine, you don't understand nine. that one either. And when it sees it, it has no common language with you, it just sits there and meets your gaze. I'm gonna head over to the tree. Okay. <laughs> talking tree seems kind of interesting. Okay. I know, right? But I can't talk to it. I say that to Eldov. I can't talk. Watches to it. Eldov approach and immediately starts speaking in Elvish. <laughs> and and it, Eldov responds. It, it, it simply great. greets you as you approach. Eldov introduces himself and also introduces Eric. This is well met, I'm sure. So. You're a talking tree, then. <laughs> Do you say it that condescendingly? I wasn't condescending. Just... Well, I mean, yeah, but we're talking about Elda <laughs> here, so... That's, that's, just, that's just how things are. That was matter-of-factly. 
matter of factly. <laughs> and he responds, So, you're a talking half elf then? <laughs> 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 My companions tell me that. So, uh, so tell me of your companions. Do I have anything to fear from them? I'm gonna look over. No, Eric, probably not. Eric turns to Elda. I was like, well, "What's he saying? What's he saying?" I think he, he he's talking about whether or not you guys are gonna steal anything from him. But I, I sure know him. I don't think Orphan wants any more of your apples, so he should be fine there. What is your purpose in the hut? At the you motions to Destel or to Terran and says your companion was less than forthcoming. At the moment, we're just looking for the guest rooms. We're just exploring as well as we can. But your ultimate purpose, your goal for being here, you were invited in. Ah, uh, well, you know, we all have, we all have purposes. <laughs> wow, he just told you to. Yeah, what, you think I'm gonna spill my guts to a tree? <laughs> so, <laughs> back at uh, Ilya the Hedgehog over here, which I'm sure is a fan fiction character somewhere. <laughs> Ilya the Hedgehog. Oh, see, the original character not steal. Character, not steal. Right. <laughs> so, what else do you want to learn from Ilya? Um, what isn't she afraid to tell us? Like, it seems it's kind of weird and arbitrary to me. She says she doesn't want to tell you anything that could cross Baba Yaga's bad side. If she, were to, if she were to tell you any of the secrets of the hut and you were to act on them, Baba Yaga would know who told. Is it possible to leave this, uh, this hurricane area through these vortices? She says the vortices are safe. They lead to other rooms in this area. She says you came through one. Zook, how long was the servant girl? And I'm saying this in his mind. How long was the servant girl? Uh, how long has she been working in the hut? Was it a year? Is this her? Was she replacing this one? Correct me if I'm wrong, but she did say it was a year, and she had one more year left, right? That's what she said. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When you were first brought to the hut, was it in exchange for were you brought here to work for the witch for like? A set amount of time, or she says my contract was for two years, but barely at the end of my first year, I I disobeyed Baba Yaga. I was somewhere I should not have been, and she found out. Is there anywhere in this room that it's safe to talk? And she shakes her head. She's not if Baba Yaga is watching. What about other rooms? Uh. She motions towards the vortex that you entered from. She says, the magic stairs. I don't think she can hear into there. Do you mind if I take you into there for a moment? She'll know that I left. Do you mind if I take her into there while Zook creates an illusion that makes you look like you're still here? And, and she I make looks you invisible? Over at Zook, and can you do that? Um, someone has to ask me. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll, I'll bring Zook up to speed on the conversation. I'll and I'll tell, him, I'll tell him I can do a minor illusion, but that's fairly simple magic. I would not be surprised if Baba Yaga could see through it. <laughs> But and I can make her invisible as I bring her over there, too. Okay. I'd be willing to try, but I'd feel really bad if I put this this little girl hedgehog in a, cha in a changer. Me, too. Um, hopefully we'll do something about Baba Yaga from the sounds of this place, because <laughs> starting to not really like her. So, uh, yeah, I'll cast okay. invisibility at the same time you cast illusion. Uh, well, tell her tell her to go into the into the bush. Okay, yeah, I'll tell her. We'll, we'll do it. You just go into the bush, and then we'll have the illusionary you come out. Yeah. Okay, and, and so she does. She clambers back into the bush. And then a second, a few minutes later, I create a minor illusion of her basically sticking her nose out of the bush like she's still talking to me. Okay, and that happens. And then I'll reach in and cast Invisibility and scoop up a little hedgehog and go through the uh, fortress. A little nothing. This is a heavy-ass <laughs> hedgehog. 
Uh, I'm making an actual hedgehog. She's been eating nothing but cookies for the last year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cookies, eating. pudding, and cream. That's yeah. literally what it says in the module. She's fat because she's been eating nothing but cookies, <laughs> pudding, and cream for a whole there's, year. There's apples in this orchard. Use some self-discipline. Does she have any teeth left? She can't reach, she can't reach yeah. up there. Uh, no, but the tree gives her apples. He shakes them down for her. Just, just spin dash into the tree. She'll be fine. So, Orphan, what, do you, how you, what else are you doing over here with this vortex? Uh, nothing. She's going to go back up to the tree okay. and, and apologize to it. And <laughs> that apple is only he so, so. He accepts your apology and says... He's speaking in Elvish. And he says, But I am still unclear as to your nature, as to whether I should consider you friends. Orphan considers for a second. And says, I, I don't know. <laughs> we don't miss, mean you any harm. How did you get here, by the way? And he tells the story about the uh, a sylvan grove that he used to grow in. And a druid who would come and tend to the grove and use it to perform her rituals. Uh, and one day she performed a ritual. <coughs> and the next full moon, Baba Yaga's hut came striding through the grove, crushing trees behind it. Plopped itself down in the middle on its big old chicken feet. Baba Yaga came out with a broom. Broomed the circle around where the tree was standing. And when that happened, he felt... His roots in the ground weaken and give way. And then she used magic to lift him up, shrink him down, and he was carried into the hut and planted here. Well, that's terrible. I've met a druid. She's a very nice woman. So, so you are enemies of Baba Yaga. Well, right now, we're mostly neutral to Baba Yaga. She has to have a very nice house. She told us to find the guest rooms, and then it's just been nightmares ever since. She has this room with a cat in it. <laughs> I was wondering when the cat was going to come. <laughs> oh my god. And he doesn't look like he knows what you're talking about. <laughs> you're better off. <laughs> well, as long as you <clears throat> behave yourselves, you are welcome in the orchard. He says, eat carefully of the trees if you desire. As you will find each of the apples that grow here to be delectable. I'll, I'll, ask, um, I'll ask the tree if he's ever met um, anyone named, uh, what, what's the guy's name? Have you met a small gnome? Yeah, what, what's... Questus? Questus? I forgot to pronounce it. <laughs> Questus. Questrix. Yeah. I'll ask him if he's ever met a, a gnome named uh, Questrix. Uh, I have an answer to that question. It's going to take me a minute to dig it out, but I do have an answer. <laughs> Does he know any numbers of three three digit numbers? <laughs> have any puzzles come through here? <laughs> <laughs> any and mysterious riddle haikus? The, the treant says, uh,. I do not know of this gnome of which you speak. It says there are many gnomes where I am from, but none bear the name Questrix. How long ago did Questrix go missing? You guys heard that he was missing when you were in Farsevir. That was a couple months ago, I think. So, but I don't. I mean, I got the impression it could have been years. That he was already missing at that point. Like, they both so sort it's of. Been a time. Like, this tree could come from our world. It's been a minute. I'm gonna ask the tree, and, uh. Okay. The, the druid who used to tend to you was her name, and then I'm gonna. I, I don't remember her name, but the, the druid that was in the Gnomish village. Her name was Golly. That's Golly. A, that's an easy. It's, a, it's an easy name to remember. I'm real bad with names. I am too. But trust me. Um, <laughs> he says no, and he, so he gives you the name of the, uh. The druid, an elven woman, and he speaks whatever her bullshit elven name is. <laughs> it's it's probably pretty bullshit. Like yeah. we can skip that. Um, and he starts. He describes the forest that he comes from, and he's not describing the forest at Far Severe. All right. 
But he is interested to hear of the forested lands that you come from, uh, being partial blood of Sylvan Elf yourself. <laughs> I'm going to say, actually, I come from a city. The person you want to talk to is the gnome over there, and I'm going to look back and Zook's fucking gone. No, Zook's here. Zook is still here, kneeling down at the bush. <laughs> I'm maintaining a magical illusion that you don't know that yet. Eldub is like, I'm like an indoorsy kind of elf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Taryn. the whole outside thing. Yeah. You go with, uh, you carry Ilya back into the stairway room. Into the magical darkness. Uh, and as soon as you do, her invisibility clicks right. off. And you see she's having a very difficult time um, on the stairs. Trying to climb down them. Well, I'm just holding her. She can't. She can't see, and she weighs eighty pounds. And so, where do you take her after she's here? I mean, this is. I mean, I have. I can see the darkness, so I can talk to her. So, all right, we're in the stairwell right now. She asks you to take her somewhere where there's light. Okay, I'll pick her up and carry her up the stairs to the top. Okay, so you go to the top of the stairs, back into the room with a floating door. And there's a soft illumination in this room. Doesn't seem to come from anywhere in particular. And she looks around and says, No, this is one of the quiet rooms. This is a place where she cannot see. So what can you tell me that could help us? Um, what did you do that caused her to turn you into this? She says one day she found her way into the conservatory. And she wasn't supposed to be in there. She was cautioned not to go in there. She had no business... Uh, no chores in there. The place is tended to by uh, magic hands. But she That's found her way in there one day after her work was done, and she found a beautiful black flower. And she stooped over to sniff it. And Baba Yaga found out. She says there are giant sunflowers growing in the garden that can see for her. When she found out, she punished me harshly, but not as harshly as she could have. She turned me into a hedgehog and sent me to an orchard and said she would come back when I was fat and succulent enough to eat. How many other quiet rooms like this do you know of? Uh... She says this is the only one. But she's sure there must be more somewhere. Is there any way that you would know for us to uh, to tell if her room was able to be seen by Baba Yaga or not? She says she has to look through something. She has to look through a device of some kind. There would be an eyeball in the room, although it might not look like an eyeball. It might look like something else. Like the sunflowers. Yeah, for example, she says uh, in the orchard they're knot holes in the tree. In the yep. in the conservatory they're sunflowers. She says in my bedroom where I lived, where I, when I was her servant, there were giant stuffed beholders, <laughs> monstrous creatures on the shelves of the room that could see. Did she also give you uh, terrifying other stuffed animals and dancers? She said she didn't think they were that terrifying. Uh, Taren will scrub the bruise on his chin. <laughs> she's like, she, she's like, are you drunk? <laughs> A little. Um, <laughs> what, do you know anything of the worlds beyond the orchard, beyond the vortices? She says she hasn't gone through them. But she knows... That they're safe because once in a while travelers come through them. But she doesn't know what's on the other side of them except this one. No, I'm sorry, that's that's not true. That's not true at all. She says the northwest one goes to a very dangerous place. And she says she doesn't know where it goes, but sometimes creatures come through them. Terrible uh, creatures out of her nightmares. And come in and strip one of the trees of all the apples and then carries them back through. And then the southwest one you think is safe? 
Uh, she says to the southwest, I believe, is the stables. She says Joel Nag comes through there once in a while to pick apples. But Joel I haven't... Nag. Joel Nag is the stable boy. Is he like you, a young child who's been serviced here for two years? Joel Nag is... A lot of things at once. Do you? Uh, is there any other information that you would know that might be useful to me if I'm going through here? Is there anything I can do to help you? She says you can end the spell and oh, take her home. Uh, we might do that if we can get control of this place from the ag. Up until then, I don't want to tip our hand. Yeah, she says if you're... Uh, well, first she asks, are, can, can you help me even though there's no more information I can offer you? She says she can possibly show you various things on level one of the hut. Um, she hasn't been through all of it, but she used to work on a great deal of it. These would be the, mostly the same rooms that uh, Vasilia works in. Although just talking to Ilya you get the sense that she's a little more bold than Vasilia is. Yep. She's poked her head in a few more places where she wasn't welcome. She was not as obedient. What's the division between the two levels? Or if, is there more than two levels? She says the first level has multicolored doors. Doors of different kinds of metal. And there are secrets. There, there, there are sequences of magical knocks that allow you to travel from the first to the second. She says there's a third level where Baba Yaga resides, but I don't know how to get there. And these knocks are they consistent? Because we've found a few sequences of numbers, but they seem to be almost random in how they affect the doors. She says she doesn't know any of the secret knocks, so she doesn't know anything about that. Well, yes. I mean, even though no matter. What we do, I, I can definitely try and help you. I don't think that the crime of sniffing a flower is worth being turned turned into a hedgehog and eaten alive. Uh, so she asks how you intend to turn her back. Uh, when Once we break Baba Yaga's control over this place, we'll have access to a fairly large amount of magic. Uh, honestly, I haven't thought that far ahead. I'm still trying to figure out my way around here okay. and then what to do about the hag. Back Sorry. in the orchard, talking to the tree... What is Zook doing down here? You're just the French make, tree. making it Maintain look like you're talking to your illusion. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. So back at the tree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. What else do you want oh, to learn from the tree? Uh, I don't... I'm trying to decide whether or not Eldov knows from the fact that there was shit watching in that one room, whether there would be stuff watching everywhere. Uh... You could probably make that, like, draw that conclusion. It yeah, would not be difficult. That's what, what where I was leading, which is why I'm not being super, like, oh yeah, we're gonna bring you the fuck yeah. out of here. Yeah. I mean, Ilya, that's Ilya why... told you point blank that Baba Yaga could watch her in some places. Yeah. That's why we're not, like, answering the tree's question. Or says, What's the real purpose here? So you're just having a, uh, like a polite a conversation? Chat. Okay. Yeah. Then you find the tree talks at great length and with great reverence about the forest it came from and how it stood there for uncountable mortal seasons and a lot of tree things things yeah. that are interesting to trees a lot of tree things he met some really interesting squirrels in his ears i really want to talk about oh, so this tree but i can't luke has also met some really interesting squirrels so once <laughs> is there anything else Taryn wants to learn from Ilya before you're done in there um i can't think of anything specifically other than that Okay. So once you're done talking to her, uh, do you bring her back, or...? Yep, I'm going to hide her in my cloak, okay. go back through the doorway, go back to where Zook is, kneel down, and put her in the bush. Okay. And then I will break the spell. Okay. Then I'm going to wander over here and be like, my ears were burning, what's going on up with here? And I'll just uh, mind link to her, thank you. And when Taryn walks away from the bush, I mean, Ilya follows you. Okay. She knows that you all are friendly now. And when you guys come up to the tree, he's talking at length about all of the different varieties of berries that used <laughs> to grow in and around his grove. How he would uh, blah, 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 blah. Does he know about any magical berries? <laughs> um, he speaks at length of druidic magic. and He knows of all manners of enchanted berries that used to be used in various rituals and whatnot. Is Eldov translating? 
Yeah, I'm well, telling Kuril everyone about all these sweet berries. Elvish, so. Although it's that weird sand elf dialect. And at the mention of enchanted berries, by the time Ilya has waddled her fat hedgehog ass up here, um, again, she kind of rolls around on her back happily for a moment. Just at the mention of enchanted berries. Because hmm. I've had some amazing jams in my time, let me tell you. <laughs> oh, we found this enchanted jam. So what else, do you, what is your other remaining goals here in the orchard? Well, that tree was super cagey as hell about these apples. Like, he paused for like a good 16 seconds before he said <laughs> delicious, so Eldov is trying to figure out if these apples are, are magic. How does Eldov do this? The, he brought up First. enchanted berries and he was hoping that the tree would move to something else. Uh, no, no, only, only Ilya. Only berries. Ilya reacted when you mentioned enchanted berries. You could, you could turn to your nice friend Khalil and use. Uh, hey, Khalil, could you use your magic eye to find out if these things are magic? Eh, I could do that. <laughs> magic, magic. That what, but then I'd have to say it out loud, which would defeat the whole purpose. Is that what Khalil's doing? Berries. Is that what Khalil is doing? He hasn't been asked to, so. Okay. Sorry. I just assume Khalil's always turning that thing off and on because it's still well, new no, to him. Well, no, because it gives him a headache seeing like everything white white out his vision because he can focus on something. Last I checked, Khalil had his dark vision turned on. Yeah, but I mean, whenever he turns it on in this place, it like gets that that like that visual burn in. Yeah, um, just when, everything when, glows. When Zook yeah. wandered over to this conversation, they're talking about Sylvan Forest. Uh, Ducal kind of talk to the tree about it and try and see if uh, he recognizes the force he's talking about too because that's what he does you do actually ah. dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. tree <laughs> yeah it sounds like he's describing uh, myths and legends that you used to hear in the forest where you grew up. <gasps> Duke's eyes get very wide. Or a wood very near there. But we're talking a thousand years ago. But still, my plane of existence. How Gentlemen, long have you been here, Trey? <clears throat> Taron kind of meaningfully clears throat. Gentlemen, uh, would you care to join me for some uh, extended darkness? 